Hello and welcome to the next video of my inventive tips and tricks and tutorials playlist. It's a mixture of everything in here. Right, this one's centered around this thing down here, the IPN presentation. What is it? Well, if you don't know what it is, this video is just for you. If you're more of an experienced invent user, you probably know what they are if you've had a little fiddle with it. If you've been on a proper training course, you'll have probably been taught it because it was the... When, when I did invent the training courses, this bit of the course was the easiest bit. It was just like five minutes, this is how you do it. Everyone's like, yeah, that's easy. All right, let's move on. But I'm surprised at how many people who use Inventor without training don't understand what they are, what they do, and how useful they are, actually. They are really useful. They serve a good purpose. Right, what an IPN is, it's this little picture here. It creates an exploded view, an exploded variation or representation of your assembly. Like Haynes Manual, if you're in, I don't know if you have Haynes Manuals in the US, I've actually got no idea, but it's like, the Haynes Manual is a book of cars where the parts are sort of exploded out with little balloons and stuff on them and shows you where things go and how things are put together. It's all about that. It's assembly instructions. That's probably a long-winded way of saying it's an assembly instruction. Uh, in Autodesk, call it an assembly. It's not a presentation. God damn it. It's not a presentation. In everybody's eyes, in the world, a presentation is a PowerPoint. Or, or you know, it's not... A, whatever. Alright, how do we use them? Right, well first off, you need an assembly, and I'm going to be working with this one here. the One of the standard sample files that come with Inventor. I've tweaked it a bit, I've changed its units over the millimetres from that other ridiculous unit that exists in the world. And um, I've just, that's pretty much about all I've done. And we're going to create a, an IPN presentation of this assembly here and show you how to do it. Because it's so easy, it's so easy. I'm going to probably make this a long video because I talk too much, but... It's dead easy to do. Right, so what you do is you start your IPN file and you put it into the presentation environment. Seriously, guys, it's that easy. There's like four buttons. That's how easy it is. So to get going, and uh, I, I, yeah, I always stumbled and kind of didn't know what to say at this point in the training course because the terminology used on the on the ribbon bar is so out of context to the rest of Inventor. It's almost like Autodesk bought this 10 years ago bunged it into Inventor and we're just like, ah, and have done nothing with it since. So instead of like placing or opening something, you create a view, right? So you select create view. If you've already got your assembly open, it'll be selected here. If not, just press the little folder button and browse to it and there's your assembly and then you just don't select the automatic explosion because it, it, what it gives you is absolute bollocks. It doesn't work very well. Uh, you can choose a different representation, like if you've got a level of detail or something that you want to specifically put in, you know, preset parts, hidden, switched off, that sort of stuff, you can do that. Uh, but we're going to click OK. And it just places your assembly into the presentation environment. There we are. Right, what do we do next? Right, well, what we want to do is create assembly instructions. So we need to show somebody how to assemble this, which involves taking components, grabbing them, and then pulling them out of context in a certain order. And it does. It, it's entirely dependent on what you're doing as to what order things sort of happen. But in the presentation environment, the first component that you pull will be the last one to go back in. That's the way to think about this. It's sort of reversed. So the way we do this is we select tweak, <laughs> tweak, what the hell? Yeah, tweak components. And I understand why this is really difficult to sort of teach yourself because the terminology and the workflows that you've got to go through here are so fiddly and again out of context with how Inventor works. It's bizarre. So the first thing you do after you've selected tweak components is you've got to drop your cursor onto a flat or a rounded face. Basically you're going to tell Inventor, if I was to select here, you're telling Inventor that when I pull a component it can move in the direction of the X, Y and Z axes or arrowheads that you see there. So if I was to select this top face here, right, it puts the cursor, one left click, it puts the cursor there. The next thing you do is you select the component that you're gonna move. So I'm gonna pull this little rivet thing here. So you give that a single click, all right? Once you've clicked it, you've then gonna pull it out of context. And again, this is where it's really fiddly. And the way I explain it to people, is you've, you've got to left click the mouse button on the arrowhead, even though it doesn't like highlight the arrowhead, hold the left mouse button down on the arrowhead and then just drag and pull away. Keep the left mouse button held down, pull it away and then let go. 
and then it, that it's approximately 77 millimeters out of context which is fine you can change it later on if you want to round it up you can put in a specific value in here but one of the most important things that you've got to do or else it just gets cancelled is you've got to press this little tick here to apply it all right that applies the tweak that's done then you click clear and you're ready to do the next one so it's a bizarre order but that's it literally guys that is it then you do it all over again you put down a the reason why you have to do this every time is you might want this component to go down you might want this one to come off like at a certain weird angle so you, you're controlling and you tell an inventor what 3d direction you want the components to come out of but in most cases it's sort of all linear it's all the same direction so i'm going to i'm going to rinse and repeat so put the cursor down again on the same face about here so it doesn't matter it doesn't matter where which face it is as long as you've got the direction specified that's the most important thing. I could have picked the bottom of that one. I could have picked this face here. As long as X goes this way, that's all I care about. So you pick the face, you pick the part, left click, drag the arrowhead, and then pull it out of context. Like that. And then press the green tick. Apply, clear, do it again. Drop the cursor down, pick the component, grab the arrowhead, pull it out tick clear drop the, the cursor pick the component grab the arrowhead pull it out click and clear okay that'll do for now so there's, there's a good we've got a good explosion going on here a nuclear up in this bitch where's everything gone how do we make modifications to this right well you've, you've got a, a browser on the left hand side which if you expand you'll see your assembly and then underneath here you'll see the various tweaks that you've created against the various parts now this is where you can if you want round things up so you know 30 mil you can do that this one here can just sort of round that up to 50 mil you don't have to you know if you don't need to be specific you don't have to do this but it's just you know for OCD purposes we're all we're all bang on there right what next? Well, if you just want to, if you want to make sure that everything's working and that everything is, you know, jolly good and the Humpty Dumpty, you can press animate and then click play, and then everything happens in reverse. So it puts the the last one in, then the second last one sort of goes back into place, then that one will, then then the river will. So everything's sort of returning back to where it should be. Jolly good, right? So, what else can we do with this? Well. There's a couple of extra things we can do if you, if you want to. Like, for example, you can you can make things rotate. So the rivet, if you want to be extra snazzy, if you want to go that extra mile and be a baller, you can say, right, well, let's do another tweak. And instead of dropping the cursor on a flat face, if I want this rivet to turn as it's coming into its position, put the cursor on the center axis of the rivet so if we just sort of orbit around here let's just sort of reset the pivot point so it's not flying off screen so we put the cursor on the center line and instead of a linear direction pick this option here and now you're specifying degrees of motion so we can say we want this to turn i don't know 2000 degrees so it's however many full circles click the tick and then click clear and then click close Right, so that, that's added in a rotational movement, but what you'll find is when we animate this, it sort of turns first, and then that moves, and it's a, the, the rotation's a separate, it's a separate action. We want to combine the rotation with this movement here. We want it to turn and do this at the same time. How do we do this? Right, well, let's reset this. To, to combine two actions together, what you do is you press this button here. There's our rotation there the screw with a degrees value we want to move that down to the bottom this is the order that we've tweaked things in and then I want to hold down the control key pick the two actions on this little screw here I call it a rivet it's a screw and then group them and then what you'll find now when we hit apply is that one will go in let's just move out the way then that one will go in and then the button goes in and then this little bad boy here will turn be cute. No. Oh. All right then. Oh uh, yeah. That, that's um. That's about it. You can you can quicken it up if you want to. Uh, the interval. I've actually got no idea what the interval represents. But all I do know is that the lower the number, the faster it goes. So if we say apply ten intervals, 
maybe it's, I haven't counted it, maybe it's like the amount of seconds it takes. No, that's quicker than 10 seconds. I don't know what the, but it goes faster. Uh, what else can we do? Uh, well, that's, uh, there's a lot, well, there's a few more things you can do, but nothing really that uh, worth sort of shouting home about. What I'm going to do is save it. And I'm going to save it in the folder which has the assembly, so the tuner, call it tuner.ipn, and then save it in there. Yeah, let's save it. And, yeah, I suppose what you can do if you want to, if you do need to issue assembly instructions, you can record it. So you've got this record button here, and you can save it out to an AVI or WMV file. However, I don't really want to get into a discussion about how videos are created, but codecs come into question, and... The default codecs that you've got to work with here aren't really brilliant, so you might have to go through a bit of trial and error to get the right video quality. Go for AVI and look at the file size once you've created it and make sure it's not too big and, you know, Google video codecs and see what you can do with it. I, I don't want to go into that with in, in, in this video. It's not what this video is about. All right then. So, we've got, we've got an animation. Brilliant. Nobody other than you can open it. It's an IPN. Only Inventor works with IPN. So, here's a tip. Well, it's not a tip. It's actually, you know, it's a genuine workflow of IPNs. I'm going to create a drawing. Uh, DWG, IDW, either way, it doesn't matter. And you can actually create a drawing view of your IPN file. That's when they start to become really useful. So, we can create a base view, browse, to uh, change the files of type to IPN. And then we can place, just say, I don't know, isometric top view of our IPN file. And we can drop that in. And then, look at that. Isn't that absolutely magical? And that makes it a lot easier to balloon things. So, instead of, you know, you got the old problem of trying to get the balloon touching the right thing, and it's hidden in somewhere, and it's obscured from view, well, you can just explode things out and create a part. Let's, let's do it. Let's we can do this. I'm just talking. Now. Let's just let's do it. Let's uh, reference the bill of materials. There we go. Look at that. Part number six. That's part number seven. Oh my god! Isn't that absolutely delicious? Look at that. Right, that balloon's enough. It's kind of it's crossing the forces. Crossing this. Don't cross the streams, man. Don't cross the streams. There we are. Look at that. That brilliant. Now you can create parts. Oh, I've got to do it. Look at my parts list. Uh, structured. Do I want structured? Probably not, but either way. Arr, too many items. Too many items. I probably should have placed that with... Uh, is there really 11 items in there? Is there? There must be. Oh, there is. We're gonna, there is 11 items in there. It doesn't look like it, but there must be. Alright, get rid of that. It's ugly. So, that's an IPN file. Isn't it magical? Did you know you could do that? Well, if you're this far into it, probably not. So hopefully that's helped you out. Uh, a couple of other things you can do as well, just whilst I'm on it, you know, come on, you've got this for you, might as well run, roll with it here. The IPN, although you can put on a drone view and explode it out to document things, you can also create a DWF of the IPN, which will include the animation controls. So if you do an export to DWF, you can, I think you need to do a complete one. Uh, it's been absolutely, I haven't tested this, it's been absolutely years since I've done this, but if we publish this to a complete DWF, I'm sort of slowing down because I'm thinking as I'm speaking here, I'm hoping this is actually going to work, or else I'm going to look like a right tool bag, and nope, there we are, <laughs> it's worked like a charm. So you can publish your IPN file to a DWF file. That will include in design review the animation ribbon bar, which you can then play. And obviously, DWFs, the viewer, is free, so you can then issue this to guys on the shop floor, to clients, to customers, you know, whoever needs to see things. And they can then, you know, zoom in and, you know, oh, how did that, how, let me see this again. Okay, all right, so that goes in there. And then, oh, so I do it in that order. Oh, I see, I see. Uh, can we slow down the play? Oh, we can even slow it down. Look at that. Oh, that's absolutely just, that's delicious. Gotta love it. Oh, and if we get slowness on the screw turn, happy days. Oh my god, I'm just, I'm just too good. Can you cope? Probably. I'm just, I'm just talking shit now, really. All right then, guys, I'm gonna cut it off there. But that's IPN files and exploded assemblies, in assembly instructions using the Inventor IPN file format. 
Hopefully you found that useful. If you did, please press like on the video. Subscribe to my channel because I do these things on a regular basis now when things crop up and I think of things to do. I'll put some comments down below if there's any unanswered questions or any requests that you have for videos in the future. And until next time, guys, thank you and toodles.